Casper Cadian Muller had everything working against him. He could have quit when the pandemic destroyed his team. Crub just won't be playing the cinnamon bowl, let's be real. He could have given up when his peers accused him of cheating. We don't want our names to be framed for the rest of our, our lives. Instead, Cadian taught everyone else a lesson. You're never done if you don't give up. He tries to snap over, gets hit by Device, who runs out and dies! 1v3 from Kadian! Also, they're wrapping him far faster than he's ready for. Ooh. Still, he's gonna finish the job. Now back onto the... Oh, 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 Kadian! And Twist wants to rip them from their fingertips. Down in with the up, and now Robs is dead! They've done it! They've done it! When it came to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Cadian should have been in the right place at the right time. He cut his teeth on CS Source in Denmark, one of the game's most competitive and dominant regions. But Cadian's bad luck began when he started to realize that his unique combination of both in-game leading and opping could be difficult to fit into every roster. For two of the first teams that I played on, I definitely also compromised a lot with like, um my role, right? I, I was always the IGL and the AWP. And in these two teams, like at Mouse, Chris J was the OPA and in SK, Freeze was the OPA, right? Despite qualifying for three out of the first four CSGO majors, Kadian and his teammates weren't able to do any real damage at the events themselves. It is absolutely nerve wracking. He's gotten tagged up by Kucha then. But oh my god, he did find a drain, but Kucha swiftly shut down that threat. And we will be seeing Hellraisers going on. Kadian spent much of 2015 with SK Gaming and the first half of 2016 with team preparation, but neither team qualified for much or helped develop his resume. During this stretch, he did get some opportunities on the analyst desk at events, and he was actually pretty good at it. But Kadian didn't want to talk about champions. His dream was still to hoist trophies. So he did something drastic. He went to North America. He stood in for twists on TSM, who was ineligible to appear on Ely due to his age, and played alongside Sick, Automatic, FNS, and Semthis. And while no one gave TSM much of a chance, many saw Kadian as a positive addition. How will the timing work out here as he goes for the peak? He can't get it. Semphis is going to secure the frag. And in doing so, the 16 11 map two goes to TSM, an unlikely result. Then his own roster was picked up by Rogue in August and retooled to include Bulgarian players Bubble and Victor in October. Just under three months later, Rogue cracked the HLTV top 30 with a win at ESEA Season 23 over LDLC. It was Mountain Dew League, sure, but this team had improved, and Kadian was forced to balance the leadership demands of some very different players. Well, we had a small culture class back then because the Bulgarians were used to spy leaders, so they were like, why are you not yelling at me? Like, they were like, <laughs> and, and, and then they had two Danes in my team. Was they like, wanted to get yelled at. Uh, they didn't want it, you know? Like, okay. explain it to me calmly, please. Don't yell at me. So like, <laughs> it was like this complete, complete culture cl uh, clash. After the rogue roster wound down from player departures, they kept him in mind. When a twist of fate gave him an opening, Cadian pounced, even though it meant playing in NA. There was some Waddell story. I don't know if you remember, but he signed, Probably do. He yeah. signed from Ghost to Rogue. That's right, I remember this. And then like uh, 20 hours before the deadline, he was like, nah, not anyways. And then he went back to Ghost or something. Brilliant. So they needed one and they called me and I told myself, I'll go there for three months, make some, uh, make some money, make some money, yeah. uh, make them survive in the pro league. Cause they were like at the relegation, but they were like dead last or second last. And I got there and we just developed a really good project quickly. Cadian spent a lot more than three months in North America. In fact, it was a full year and Rogue gave him valuable experience leading a developing squad that truly bought into his system and his work ethic. Most importantly, the team finally brought him back to the major. Vice coming in, there is a timer to this and there is the backstab. Android's gone, now Shazam has to look into two places and he can't. 16 to 11, Rogue have done it. And you can see how much it means to Kadian. And though he won a series against Space Soldiers, Kadian's run was again stopped short in part by Danes. 
coming in from Banana. He's got Zipex to play against. Can he win the battle? No, not quite. Zipex finishes him off through the wall. Now down to Cadian. That's a stunning shot there from Cadian onto the Vice, but that's all he's able to do. And Astralis grind it out. But making it to the Major was enough for some teams to take notice of Cadian's continued grind in the usual chaos of the post-Major shuffle. So he finally got another chance. His hard work paid off. He finally went home. Denmark had seized their second major win, seemingly putting Astralis on track to continue an era of unparalleled dominance. But Cadian was still working on a win. Now with North, one of the country's top teams, Cadian was able to both op and lead, which helped his team rise as high as 7th ranked on HLTV during his 8 month tenure. But LAN results were elusive. Cadian later told HLTV in an interview that he saw the spirit of mutual sacrifice he expected from his roster fade, and he knew that his days were numbered. If one guy doesn't want to sacrifice because he sees this team potentially as um, a stepping stone for the next bigger team or whatever, you see him, he doesn't want to run in. Okay, well, hell no, I'm not going to run in for this guy then. If he's not ever going to do it for me, why would I run for him? And those kind of mentality just really f***ed us in that team, I think. After six months on the bench with North, his shot finally came. Heroic's Blame F departed for complexity, and Cadian slid onto the roster, but not as IGL. Snappy assumed leadership duties, while Cadian played primary op. He took to the role with Gusto, putting up some solid performances. No smoke on the coffins, lots of damage inflicted, and they're gonna be walking in to a bit of a trap. S attack with the FAMAS from the side is spraying them down from CT. But Savant has been caught, leaving Dennis alone. They know where he is and Cadian will not miss out on his chance. Three kills goes to the AWPA. And for five months, Heroic picked up steam. It's left just on to Searson and Faven to try and hold on. And Faven, he's actually managed to catch one with the AWP in middle. Switching over to the right, we're trying to clear the pit, but he fails. It's left on to Searson to try and save them in the grand final, and he's not gonna do it. It will be heroic with the victory. Stal, не убивай фейс крейка, все-таки есть возможность. Кедиан, 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 Heroic. While he's had some very nice performances today, this might be just too much for him. Stown, ready and waiting for him. Aggressive, up close and personal in his face. The UMP comes out, but it's going to do absolutely nothing. Heroic are your GG Bet Winter Cup winners 2020, and they do it in style without dropping a single map across any series. Heroic was firing on all cylinders, and Fun Plus Phoenix bought the roster out in time for Season 1 of Flashpoint. But at the last second, the deal fell through. We as FPX, Heroic, call us whatever name you want, will not be finishing the first group stage of Flashpoint. Probably just won't be playing the tournament at all, let's be real. Cadian's desperation, his raw emotions were entirely understandable. His road had been long enough. He had experienced plenty of bad luck, but this was different. Still, there was only one thing to do. Chart a new course and work twice as hard to get back to the top. Heroic hired longtime Danish IGL Hunden as their coach, adding a wealth of information on potential opponents, as well as helping to build a structural frame for Cadian's looser IGL style. So that's how we started the team and I was like, this is not going to do well. We're not going to be a top five team if we don't have some kind of a structure. So we tried to create some kind of a structured freedom-ish thing on the, on the T side so people could do whatever they wanted to do, but in a, in a controlled way where everyone knew how how they were going to react. Heroic wanted to make their mark, and at Cologne, they showed exactly how far they had come. Now he can be very quick behind them. They're going up, hey, and Cadian, if that smoke arrives, I think they're gonna disrespect it. He's got a good chance at another here. Cadian's on for four, oh, maybe even the ace. Go on, Cadian, he takes over the game. Next is in this one, Nico with a double. He's got to line him up again. Oh, the reload, and now the 1v1, he needs the ace to keep this safe. He does it, Nico, the timing could not be better for him again. Oh no. Into the lion's den. And oh, no. oh, Quad kill for grand final point for the trophy. This is the first to loan for Borup, Cadian, Tessus, and they're the last team standing. Unbelievable.
With a $150,000 grand prize and a win over Vitality, Kadian proved that he had what it took to bring his style of IGLing and opping to the very top of the Counter-Strike world. But the celebration was cut short just a few days later, when Hunden was implicated in a wide-reaching cheating scandal involving the use of a spectator buff. I've got this game loaded up. It's Heroic versus Astralis. It's the match where Hunden, for the first 10 rounds, had a coach camera, or had a camera, and free cam on banana. Almost immediately, the accusations came. How could Kadian not have known? The news cast out on all of Heroic, but especially their leader. But Kadian was undeterred. He told everyone that he hadn't cheated and that the team's number one rank was the result of hard work. So basically, we have 96 uh, maps played in the past three months. Yeah. We participated in literally everything that we possibly could. Then, they took DreamHack Open Fall without their now banned coach, reaffirming their status as one of the best teams in the world. Five versus three for Heroic to close this tournament, to win yet another online event, to cement themselves at the top of Counter-Strike. Shocks trying his damnedest Apex with only 14 HP, 1v3, and get ready for Acadian pop-off, cause he's done it. He closes and leads his team to yet another win. The end of the year was less kind to Heroic though, and changes had to be made. He's looking around the site, sees his man, but no, Shiro takes the fight, takes the win, 16-3, Heroic fall. Nico and Borup were benched in February, and the team brought in Refresh and Shush, exciting players with sky-high potential. But Kadian didn't talk about their one-taps. He talked about their determination and drive. They're working very hard and there's no complaining. If you ask them to do something, they'll do it straight away. And that's part of the profile with them. That's why we chose them as well. They have undeniable talent. We know that, but talent can only drive you so far. You need to be willing to put in the hours and these two will. So yeah, picking those two, you can already feel at this point was the right decision. The new squad's first big challenge, ESL Pro League Season 13, where the best teams in the world waited to see how much damage this new look heroic could do. That's the AWP and kills the guy CT. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, he's knifed him, and he's gotten away with the AWP. I'm starting to get nervous. There's no way, there's no way. Katie, you can't win Pro League like this. You can't win Pro League like this. No way. Axar's left, 40 seconds, and the bomb's on A. Take your time, son. You're about to make the play of your career. Gets the info, he just has to hit this shot, and he's done it for Heroic. The leader. Calling well above his years, clearing corners. Oh, no! You're an animal! Heroic have done it, and I just can't believe it. Kadian pulled off one of the greatest ever clutches in CS history, locking in his reputation as one of the greatest IGLs, not only in Denmark, but the world. Heading into IEM Cologne 2021, Kadian wasn't just confident against Astralis, he felt like his team's recent results spoke for themselves. Astralis hasn't had, had any rivalry with any other team because they've always won. And I'll be quite frank, but at this point, we haven't lost to them for a very long time. So if they beat us today, I can accept the fact that we have a rivalry. But uh, if we don't, I'll smash the hammer and say there's no, nothing. And the kings of Denmark sit happily on their throne. There it is. They're off to the playoffs. Astralis locked in. Clearly, there was more to be done, but while Kadian was working on that, more controversy racked the organization. Hunden was reinstated in April 2021, and then released in July when Heroic began legal proceedings against him, where they alleged that he had shared sensitive strategic information with a competitor. Then, in August, Hunden claimed that the Heroic players knew about his use of the spectator bug that earned him his initial ban. He followed that up in September with proof of a conversation between himself and Nico a former member of the team. The Esports Integrity Commission cleared everyone on Heroic except Nico, and Heroic shared their emotionally charged side of the story in September. We want this story out. We want the community to understand, um, because I think as you have seen earlier in this video, it's not been easy to be under this kind of pressure from uh, co-players and co-colleagues in, in the industry. So. We don't want our names to be framed for the rest of our, our lives. Moving past Hunden was critical because the team needed to be focused for their next goal, the Stockholm Major, the first since LAN events returned. 
Deep smoke, they're gonna make a pass, lining up, and that choke point, triple kill for Tess. As he is going to try and play a close, legendary angle here, top of Banana. There's the first kill from Katie, and gets the second as well. Not gonna get the third though, so close, but he's done his job this round. They might be in a lot of trouble. G2 have the bomb side on lockdown. Shush with a big double, but Hunter, he's back for more. And now he just has to stay alive. Still, Katie and left, and they get eradicated by Hunter. It's 19 to 15. G2 make the grand finals of the major. A narrow OT loss to G2 couldn't have felt good, but this Heroic roster had grown immensely since 2020. In 2022, Heroic's identity continued to develop under Cadian, as well as the team's new coach, former pro player, Exist. They weren't the most structured team, but they worked hard, had incredible clutch potential, and they weren't afraid to get loud. I'm still uh, like yelling at my teammates, right? Like even in practice, you can put us in practice against the top 45 team in the world and we're making some stupid mistakes that we literally just talked about from uh, reviewing one of our games at the AMA. Uh, I'm gonna tell people when it's not good enough. A top four finish at Katowice was more valuable experience for the roster. Their results at the next major in Antwerp slipped slightly, but each tournament gave the team new data and new opportunities. When they were forced to replace Refresh with Yabby halfway through the year, there was an adjustment period. But again, when it was time for the Rio major, Heroic showed up. 30 seconds on the clock, not a whole lot of time if you want to transfer between the bomb sites. This is everything. This engagement is huge from Stout. Oh, and Yabby, and you are one on one. It's just Siren left on the other side once again to try and save it. What a headshot! Nice flash, doesn't catch Stout, and he's going to have a lot of love of frags in the round. There they come, three and four, and it's all time. With every passing second of that bomb, the outsiders prepare to start the celebration. And while winning the major is always the goal, that doesn't mean you can't appreciate some of the other victories too, especially when it's at home. Now Cadian's the next one, finds an initial. They're wrapping him faster, they're wrapping him far faster than he's ready for. Ooh. Still, he's gonna finish the job. Now back onto the, oh, oh, oh Cadian! We get the walk back around the cat, replacing the dead body of Rops, looking for the impact, but it's heroic into the kill feed. And it's heroic with two rounds on a T side in OT. The pressure is so real, the dreams are alive, and Twists wants to rip them from their fingertips. Stown in with the up, and now Robs is dead, they've done it! With his win at the event, Cadian's roster ended the year at the very top of the HLTV rankings. But maybe more importantly, Cadian was where he belonged. Boy, have I f***ing waited for our time, man! He didn't give up during his major drought when he might have had the option to move to working on the desk at events. He didn't give up when he played in North America or when his team collapsed around him. He didn't give up when events went online and even the best players in the world struggled to give 100%. Kadian isn't a generation defining aimer, he isn't a highlight machine. But after a decade spent grinding his way to the top, he showed us that natural talent isn't everything. And standing on that stage, tearfully embracing his mom, Cadian taught all of us that hard work can always take you to the top. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.